Ah, how to not be awkward after not posting for a while, am I right? For Valentine's Day, I thought it would be kind of fun to do a thrift flip. Yeah, we went to uh, our local value village and I was lucky enough to find some brown loafers. Luckily, they were only about $12, so $6 a shoe. So if anything went wrong, it wasn't gonna be a big, big Ooh. problem. And then we ran to Michael's, but if you don't have a Michael's near you, you can probably go to your local craft store and see if they have leather or vinyl paint. And I picked these up. Note, if you're using this one in particular, don't do what I like to do and just wing it without really reading the instructions. Cause on the bottle, it tells you to wash nope. the leather first so that you remove any coating. I didn't do that and I think that kind of came back to bite me a little bit later. The other thing that I went and I purchased from Walmart or you can get it at the dollar store really is sponge brushes. This is what I used to paint the shoes with. I first started by taking some masking tape that we got from Walmart and just making sure I covered all the parts of the shoe that I wanted to remain either uncolored or I wanted a really nice crisp line. I had been craving, craving, is craving the right word? No, C coveting, coveting a pair of split color Aloha shoes. But then I, I saw the price and I said, I'll make them instead. I will go and buy a pair later because I, I want a real pair of boots. Use the masking tape to cover up anything that I didn't want colored, even though the sole and the heel of the boot was really, really dark, like a dark brown. I genuinely really liked it and I wanted to keep it that way, even though I was coloring it a much lighter color. So I just went ahead and went around the whole rim of the the shoe just to ensure that I would preserve that part of it and keep it clean. Then I went ahead and did one, two, but really one coat of base paint. And this is another thing about reading instructions. It tells you to wait an hour in between coats. I did not do that for the first uh, two coats that I did. So I'm pretty sure they just ended up melting into each other. But I did a base layer priming coat of white so that I could obliterate the darker color. Then I went ahead and painted the shoe with the lighter paint first, so with the pink, and then let it dry. And then I did the two layers of pink paint. That took way longer than I thought it was ever going to take. I thought I could get this done in an entire evening. How naive. <laughs> oh, I got you. Ah, not the one I wanted, but the one I got. Oh, oh, now you come up. You're a cutie. <laughs> oh yes, the peel, the peel reveal. Okay, okay, okay. I'm not mad at this. Does mean that I'll have to go back and fix that one up a bit, but I am not mad. Oh, oh, okay. That's not so bad. Slow. Steady. Slow and steady as she goes. Humbled a little bit. But that's not bad. That's that's not bad. I'm not mad. And this is what it looks like after peeling and a little bit of touch up. Not bad, right? Not bad. All right, well, so with shoes complete, I had to do the one thing that made this whole process actually worthwhile, and that was construct some Valentine's Day outfit. So for the first outfit, I thought I would make it really cute and a little bit more romantic with a beret and long maxi pleated skirt that I got from Uniqlo, and I just threw on my leopard print sweater that has pink and yellow spots on it. I think it's really cute. I matched it with a red beret just to tie the red of the shoes to the rest of my outfit. Luckily enough, this season, red and pink is a fashionable color combination. 
I remember I was doing some research for another video I did, the one where I was talking about how to wear red and green without looking like an elf. Uh, I'll leave a link up on the screen. And I came across a article that said that like in 2015 or something to that effect, it was red, red and pink sh is not a good color combination. So just goes to show you that when they come up with these colors of the season or what have you and trying to convince you that you need to be fashionable. Oh no, cuddles are over, but dog remains. Yeah, it was an article saying how in 2015 it was not a good color combination, which just goes to show you that when they come up with these things, it's as much as it is just to keep things fresh and ever changing and be a little bit more new and stuff, it's just a way to make you buy stuff. So just wear what you like. In order to give it a little bit more of a romantic look, not just like a Parisian look with the beret, I decided to get myself my new pearl purse that I got off of the interweb. And to tie it in a little bit more, I decided to go with my black pearl necklace. I didn't want to wear white pearls just because I thought that they would blend in too much. Thank you, enough of that. I'm gonna take that from you. I know the paint is non-toxic, but that does, should not be used as an invitation or a challenge, young sir. For the second look, I decided to make it a tiny bit more neutral, I guess. So it's the same skirt as I was wearing in the previous outfit from Uniqlo. And then I just threw over my nice kind of cropped blazer. I think I got this from Zara a while ago, but I had never really figured out a way to wear it actually until I had purchased this longer skirt. I'm also wearing a button up shirt that I got from Morning Witch. Uh, for accessories, I swapped out the beret and put on these red gloves. I don't remember where I got them because I've had them for years. I paired it with this pink clutch that I got from Fossil. It's always nice to be able to wear this thing out just because I don't have a lot of pink in my wardrobe. So it's nice to throw it in where I can. And the necklace that I chose to go with this was my vintage or antique necklace, I guess you could say. For the third outfit, I have on a, another item that I purchased from Uniqlo. Uh, this is just a blush colored satin slip dress. Uh, I had never seen it quite in this specific color before, so I decided to grab it because I think it looks quite nice on me and it's perfect for Valentine's Day. For this look, I wanted it to make a bit more sense with the current Canadian climate that we have going on here as February is one of our coldest months. It's quite impractical to be wearing a satin dress. I paired the slip dress with a sweater that I got from Leachy and the Label. They are a boutique brand, I believe based out of LA. I do genuinely like their stuffs, especially if you're into more of a streetwear aesthetic, definitely check them out, see what you think. But the neutral tone of the sweater means that you can pair it with a lot of different things. And my final outfit for all of you that would prefer to wear pants as opposed to a skirt or a dress, I paired the same sweater from the previous outfit. Lots of item repeating today, but that is perfectly fine because that should be something that's normal. But anyways, I paired these trousers that I got from Aritzia with the same sweater from Leachy and the Label, and I just tucked it a little bit the front so you can see where my actual waist is just because it was a bit too boxy leaving it alone and this is my more understated look this is kind of how I envision wearing it if you know you don't want to go too crazy and you want to be more neutral up top but then you're bringing all of the attention down to your shoes if you want it to be like the statement piece of your outfit so I accessorized this look with the same pearl purse that you saw in the first outfit just because I wanted to in keep with the whole elegant and romantic aesthetic that I wanted to kind of carry over through all of my outfits. If you're kind of dabbling in wearing more color, this is an easy way to kind of slide into it. 
or just like if you don't really want to be wearing a super loud outfit that day you want to be more understated and or if you just want the shoes to be the star of the show this is be a good way to do it overall i'm really really happy with how these shoes turned out i am amazed that i didn't utterly ruin them because i genuinely thought it was going to be a disaster and i'd have to throw them out and I would be very sad, but I'm I'm glad. I'm gonna try and see if I can get some sealant to actually make them a bit more long lasting and see if they can be worn properly outside. I mean, Valentine's Day is coming up soon. So there's a possibility that I will be able to wear them out in the wild. But yeah, if you do decide to try this yourself or even if you already have a pair of split shoes that just happen to be like Valentine's Day-esque Valentine's Day colors, I would love to see the outfits that you guys put together. You can tag me on Instagram. I'd love to see it. And thank you so much for staying to the end. Have a good one. Bye.